let's talk about calculus on parametric curves now. Notice that when we're working with parametric curves, we can still talk about the tangent line to the curve at a point. Remember that our independent variable for our parametric curve is actually the variable t. So both x and y are coordinates of functions of t. In other words, x and y, these are dependent variables that depend on what t is, and we call those guys coordinate functions. Okay. So the natural question becomes, how are we going to find the slope of this tangent line? The answer to this question is we will be using the chain rule. Okay. So using the chain rule, we will implicitly differentiate y equal to f of x with respect to t. Now, even if our curve cannot be described as y equal to f of x, we can still uh, find dy dx. So let's see how we do this. The first thing I want to do is I want to apply the chain rule to y equal to f of x by differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to t. So differentiating the left side, we get dy dt. And when we differentiate the right side over here, we need to use the uh, chain rule. So first, we differentiate with respect to x, dy dx. And then according to the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of dx dt, like so. OK. Next, what we want to do is we want to solve for uh, dy dx. So we're going to divide both sides by dx dt, and we get dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. And this will be our formula for how we're going to um, differentiate and get dy dx. Now remember, we really need dx dt to not be equal to 0 because we don't um, want to allow zeros in the denominator. So I'm going to highlight this equation because this is how we find our first derivative. OK? Cool. So how are we going to calculate the second derivative? So we want the second derivative and this is what we're going to do. The first thing I want to mention to you is that when we're calculating a second derivative, um, we want to remember what the notation for the second derivative looks like. So the typical notation, Leibniz notation for a second derivative is d squared y over dx squared. Now, why does this look like this? Well. The reason why it has a strange notation is think about what we're actually doing. We're starting with our first derivative, dy dx, and then we're differentiating that first derivative with respect to x. So if I put the differentiation operator in front over here, d dx, that means the d dx means Take the derivative of the things that comes next with respect to x, and the dy dx is the derivative, the first derivative. So we can see that it almost looks like you're multiplying two d's together. That's why this looks like d squared. And you have two dx's multiplied together. That's why it's dx squared. At least that's the way it looks, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to take this part right here this dy dx, and we're going to uh, think of this as think of this as 
the y in the first derivative. Okay, so when we go to write the formula for the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, you're going to differentiate the y part with respect to t first. The y part is dy dx, and then the denominator is still dx dt. So this is how we're going to calculate the second derivative. And I'm going to highlight this formula because uh, this is what we use to find the second derivative. So I wanted to point out a quick uh, note here. Uh, I just wanted to remind you, don't do anything illegal. And what do I mean by illegal? I think sometimes when x is equal to f of t and y, y is equal to g of t, uh, what a lot of students do incorrectly is they say, oh, the second derivative is simply um, take the second derivative of the numerator function and divide it by the second derivative of the denominator function. This is uh, totally incorrect. Okay, This is not the same as what we've described in this formula right here. So let's take a, let's take a look at an example. And through this example, we'll be able to see how we do this. So let's take a look at an example one together, okay? I have a parametric curve. It's not expressed in y equal to f of x form. It's written parametrically like this. And let's calculate the first derivative first, all right? So in order to calculate the first derivative, I need to calculate uh, dx dt and dy dt. So dx dt is just gonna be equal to three t squared. And dy dt is going to be equal to 2t minus 1. So when I calculate the first derivative, dy dx, we know that's dy dt divided by dx dt. And we can see that that's simply going to be 2t minus 1 divided by 3t squared. So I'm going to highlight that. This is our answer for part A. Now let's look at our second derivative, part B. So for part B, we want the second derivative d squared y dx squared. And as I had said earlier, we're going to differentiate the first derivative with respect to t. So that's d dt dy dx. And we're going to divide by dx dt. Okay. Now, when I calculate the derivative of the first derivative, I'm going to need the quotient rule for the numerator of our second derivative. So the numerator here is going to be the derivative of the top function, which is 2 times the bottom, which is 3t squared, minus the derivative of the bottom function, which is 6t times the top function, which is 2t minus 1, all divided by the bottom squared, which would be 9t to the fourth. Now, that's just the numerator of our fraction. So what I really want to do is I really want to divide. So I'm going to put a long line here by 3t squared like this. Now. That's a complex fraction. Instead of writing that giant division sign with divided by 3t squared, let me undo that. And let me just multiply instead by 1 over 3t squared, right? That means the same thing as dividing by 3t squared. So let me simplify this answer. The denominator is going to be. Um, 
easier to calculate, so let's write that first. That's going to be 27t to the sixth power. For the numerator, uh, I need to multiply 2 times 3t squared is going to give me 6t squared. I need to distribute the uh, second term there, so this will be minus 12t squared plus 6t. And when I simplify the numerator, I'm going to get 6t minus 6t squared, all divided by 27t to the 6th power. So I can see that I have a common power of t that I can factor out from the numerator. So I can factor out a 6t from the numerator and I would have a 1 minus t. And then in the denominator, I'm still going to have 27t to the 6th power. Okay. So uh, just a little bit more simplification. We'll make this nice. So we're going to get this. I pull out a 3, so I'll have a 2t or not a 2t, sorry, a 2 times 1 minus t, and because I multiplied top and bottom by 1 over 3, that makes the 27 into a 9, and the t to the 6, uh, that can, I can cancel one of those t with t's with the t in the numerator, that's going to give me a t to the 5th. So this is my fully factored final answer for the second derivative. So I just want to point out, once again, you know, the numerator over here has to be the derivative of the first derivative, and the denominator over here, that's what I wrote right there. Okay? All right, everybody, we'll finish this example in class. You take care, okay?